All right, and I start us, and I start with an introduction. Jessica, thanks so much for doing this. Everybody, this is Jessica, and the reason that we're doing this video along with her son and her husband is to talk about eye gaze. Jess has become an eye gaze master. Okay, I'm going to say I'm going to come all the way in. Right, Jess? And so imagine without eye gaze, you'd have such an impossible time communicating. It doesn't change what I hear all the time from a lot of people, which is it's hard to use and it's difficult to get it to work properly. And then we were talking about it. You guys have kind of cracked the code as far as tips and tricks. And so I'm glad that we get a chance to go through it. Will you kind of walk us through what you guys have figured out? And then what I'll do during the video, I'll walk around and actually show the screen on the eye gaze as well. Okay, so tell us all the important stuff. Okay, the first thing you wanna do is, uh, you wanna call your technical support and get them to unlock it. That way you can use every uh, all the little social abilities, uh, Facebook, FaceTime, text message, uh, TikTok, you know, surf the web, anything you like to do like that, and it'll unlock everything inside the system. And so we were talking about ahead of time as a lot of folks, they didn't call, they didn't know how to, yeah, to call. They call technical. And so they can use the basic functions and they think for that reason that it's working, but there's a whole bunch of other functions especially like what you're talking about all the online stuff and they didn't have access to it mm -hmm. all right so your first thing is call tech, call tech. asking for a code you were saying there's a cost to it yeah it's a one-time cost of about it ranges from either 20 or 25 dollars okay. so it's just a one-time cost and they unlock it for you immediately okay what's the next stuff that the next so the next step a lot of people have trouble with the sensitivity well she was having trouble with the sensitivity of the browser the dot the adaptive touch which is it just moves all over the place. Sometimes it loads too fast. So you want to go in your settings. So you're going to go in okay, your settings. Okay, I'm going to come on around. Hang mm -hmm. on, I'll walk around. So what we know is unless that setting is properly configured, then Jess, it's really hard to track. Yeah, yeah so this okay. is your tracker that she's moving with, controlling with her eyes. And uh, a lot of times it moves too fast for people, it's too sensitive. So you want to go in your settings. Then you want to go to accessibility. Which is here. Jess is already on it. You guys can hear. You can see <laughs> Jessica's thought. She's already there. Thanks, then you Jess. want to go to touch. And then you have your assistive touch. You want to turn this on because usually when you get your first get your uh, your iPad, it's not. It, that's not on. The assistive touch is not on, which is the dot, which is the cursor she's moving. That's never on. So you're gonna want to go turn that on. And then when you come in, you can customize. You want to single tap it, double tap it, or you go down the idle. We have ours at 40%. Some people might like it faster. Some people might like it slower. You know, it's just control how long it dwells on something you want to pick. And so uh, it's sensitivity. It's the sensitivity measure, touch and sensitivity, tracking sensitivity. It goes from turtle, which is not really slow, turtle. to bunny. You turtle know, to bunny, gonna... really? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's a mid. We got hers around about close to midway. I'm going to come on Yeah, in. so. Okay. And then you want to turn on your dwell control. So the well control is the way you can go here, and your sister touch, tap it, and that way she control over her eyes. She can go home anytime. You don't need anybody to touch it for you. You can just she can just go home, you know, and pick any other app she want to choose. You know, text messages, TikTok, you know. And you also want to calibrate it with your eyes. This will be an app that's already on there. You're gonna want to go in a TD Copilot. So you want to line these two dots up with your eyes in the green. And then you hit calibrate. So this is the device is configuring right now. It's calibrate toward your eyes. I have my phone right in the middle. So imagine it may or may not <laughs> be able probably to. Bad because your phone. But this is how you. This is just. Okay, I'm gonna pull my know. phone back out of here. <laughs> and I'm gonna come on over to the front for a minute because it's true. All right, let's watch Jess in action. And again, this right now is the time where. The program is calibrating with your eyes, Jessica. So I know already a lot of times people have said they can't control it. Either it's too much sensitivity or too little sensitivity. It makes a lot of sense now looking at the settings, mm -hmm. right? Until you modify them, then you might find that you just can't track in the way that you need. But once you do modify, you get really good control. Yeah. See, now she okay, hang on. I'm going to come on back around. Okay, so now it's successful. Now she can go do whatever she wants. She can go into, uh, 
You can go type in my message, man. FaceTime, TikTok. So you in here, this is the other app. You type your messages where it say it out loud. They let her type something, then they'll say it out loud for her. Uh, you're not gonna be able to do it because you got your yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just type something in, you know. Let okay, now I'll come on around okay. to the back because I think what everybody knows as far as the functionality is that on the back, when Jessica is typing something, this is the part that we'll see or family sees, and then once she's finished, we'll see the full statement. You can do this, you can do this, yeah, yeah but just. I totally agree, right? You can do this because what happened just before this video, there's somebody that's here in house, uh, and I was telling you he has an eye gaze, but because it's been so difficult for him to learn, he hasn't been able or hasn't decided to take the time, and so he is essentially in a position where he can't communicate at all. And then when you came on over, and thank thank you guys, let me pull back uh, for going through the whole explanation with him and his family, because now he could start using eye gaze. And the place that he was at, again, the place a lot of people are, they get it. They don't know the sensitivity or how to change those settings. They don't know to call the company and get anything else. And so they're just limited and oftentimes never really use it to its full potential. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's what we ran into. We just played around with it. Sensitivity is gonna be. It's probably take you a couple of days to get the sensitivity down, because it's really, you know, it's gonna seem hard and tiring, because you're just moving your eyes and head and kind of like, and you're so used to moving your eyes with your head, like you know, kind of like a, but you know, it's more of just your eye thing, you know, eye things. But you, you get it. Yeah, uh, Jess. While I have you here, I'm gonna go ahead and just let everybody know when we first got started, uh, you were progressing. And then it looked like we got control over progression after a handful of months. Yeah. yeah. So just kind of thinking about where you are in the future, we know already uh, we have control over things. So, yes. yeah. Yes. Yeah, so I can't even wait to see what happens yeah. next. Control, arm movement. That's right. Yeah. Right. We, how long from the time that we started do you think that we had control over progression? I say we started in October. We got control right at probably after our first visit, really in October. Yeah. So I'll say October from November, we got control of it. As and far as there, progression yeah, speed, and from, yeah, from there, uh, control of progression speed. And from there, it was just she was getting more control over her muscles and stuff. We noticed little things, step step further, uh, picking up her arm more, you know, more arm movement and stuff, and everything like that. Uh, like she picked up her arm over over the sink, which is up here. You know, she just picked it up and put it up there. So, yeah. Recently. Yeah, recently. It's probably about a month ago. Yeah. So we're talking, having started in October, right now we are middle of June of 2023. When was your first symptom? My first symptom was in August of 2021. Yeah. Before, that was before we got here, though. So 2021 was the first symptom of it, first diagnosis of it. And then we came here in October of 2022. I always like to put a time frame, and the reason is because you wonder at some point, do you age out of the ability to show improvement? But no, it turns out because imagine first symptoms 2021 and real treatment, or at least treatment here, started in October. And then it wasn't until the last month, more or less, that was May, regaining the use of an arm. Yeah. It's exciting. Again, I can't wait. I can't wait to see what happens next. <laughs> Hey Jess, is there anything that you want to say on your video? She wanted to say, she wanted to say, praise God, and you can do it. Everybody, yeah. just don't stop. You can do it. That's right. That's right. There's yeah. always a message. You can do it. Yeah, for sure. Okay, I'm gonna turn this off. Thank you guys for doing this.